Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to Getting Started with the Atmel Explained Mini. So the Atmel Explained Mini is a microcontroller development board from Atmel. I got my hands on one because I was recently at a maker fair here in Colorado and the nice people at Atmel were giving them out for free. So I decided to try it out and do this getting started guide. Just so everybody knows, just as a note, that I'll be doing this tutorial from the point of view of an Arduino developer. Okay, let's get started. So there is the Atmel Explained Mini, which is a development board for the Atmega 168 microcontroller. Now this board has the 168 PB, which is the newer version of the chip that you don't find on any of the Arduino boards yet. So let me play this video, and unfortunately my camera doesn't zoom in well, so I'm going to jump around a little bit. But let me uh, stop it right here, right here actually. So here you can see it has a USB mini connection. And the nice thing about this board that is really nice is you don't have to get a separate programmer to program it. It actually has these, uh, what's it, the EDGB chips on here for doing programming. Oh, here it is, EDBG, excuse me, for doing programming. So this is actually a, a chip that will do the programming and debugging. So you don't need to buy special programming hardware separate or separate programming hardware, I should say. Here's actually the chip that the development board is focused on, the Atmega 168PB. One thing that I didn't like about this, though, is you pretty much have to do some soldering if you want to use it in any capacity. A lot of different solder holes. Let me actually play it again to kind of show you something. So it actually is made to fit Arduino shields. So let me stop it here. So these pins here, and it has uh, ones on the other side as well, but these are made for um, the Arduino shield or Arduino pin layout. So here, this is equivalent to the analog pins on the Arduino, and this would be the VN ground, you know, 5 volts, 3.3 volts. So you can put shields on here. I mean, of course, you have to solder on the headers, but you could put an Arduino shield on here and control it with this development board. And then what's nice, too, is they break out the pins away from the headers so you can actually connect to them separately if you wanted to do, I don't know, debugging or something like that. Now, next what I'm going to do is get into the programming environment for this board, and that's going to be Atmel Studio. And Atmel Studio, the version I'm using is 7, which of the time of this video, 7 just recently came out. This is Atmel's programming environment. It's free to download. And so let me bring up Atmel Studio. So here's my Atmel Studio 7 loading, and as you can see, I have my development board plugged in already. When you first plug in the the explained mini, it'll, you know, your computer, assuming you're using a Windows, it'll install some uh, software on it briefly. Excuse me, some drivers on it. First thing that pops up is you can see the programming environment actually recognizes the, the development board, so it knows that it's connected. So let me go to the start page that's on this tab. So here's the start page, and what we're going to do is we're going to start a new project. So I'm going to press New Project, and I'm going to select GCC C Executable Project. So we want to program in C. Just so people know, I do actually have a tutorial that, that talks about how to actually use Arduino sketches in Atmel Studio. I do that with the uh, Arduino Zero, which also has a built-in programmer. So just a note in case you're interested. So we have our program selected. I'll press OK. Now it's going to ask me to select my device target. So it has all the different Atmel chips. I'm going to say at, it's going to be an Atmega. So we'll find it here. So you can see they have a couple different 168s. So this is a 168PB. Some of these old, these other 168s are the ones that you'll actually find on Arduino boards. But the, the PB is a new version as of the time of this video and is not on any Arduino boards at the time of this video. So I'm creating the project now that I selected my target device. And here's the code for my project. And actually, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to paste in the code that we're going to use for this example. So there's the code that I pasted in. And basically what I'm going to do is just basically the blink sketch. Now. Once again, I mentioned that I was going to do this from the point of an Arduino programmer. So this programming environment is going to be different from the Arduino IDE. 
So for instance, you don't have the setup function, you don't have the loop function, you just have this main function. And we're actually going to have to manipulate, you know, ports and registers directly, whereas in Arduino we have sort of a layer of software on top of that, or libraries, I should say, to abstract that. But here we don't have that. So if you're looking to get more down deep into the controls of a microcontroller, this is a, a good place to start. So first I set the clock frequency to 16 megahertz. I call in two libraries. So here's an AVR library in I.O. to make things a little easier. And I call also the delay.h, which basically has a function, a delay function like the Arduino delay function kind of. So we go into our main function. So this is going to always be operated. I first thing I do, so you can almost think of this as my setup section, and then this is going to be my main loop. The first thing I do is I want to set the pin or the digital pin I want to use to blink my LED. I want to set it to an output. So this is a little confusing too if you're first using a microcontroller outside of the Arduino environment is basically the, the digital pin that I'm going to use is going to be in the port B section of pins. It's going to be PB5 or also called PC int 5 or it's going to be pin 17 on the chip. So a lot of different things to call this pin. So if we set it to one, that'll turn the output, excuse me, that'll turn the digital pin to an output and a zero to an input. So we want it to be an output. This is the register for port B pins to set them to an input or output. So I want to set the DDRB register pin or bit five to one. So there's going to be eight bits in here starting from zero going up to seven. I'm going to set number five, which is really, if you're counting, from one is six, so I'm gonna set it to a one. And what I'm doing here is I'm oring it. So whatever it is right now, when I, when I use this one to or it against the register, it'll set it to one. Then I go into this loop, and this loop is a while loop, and since it has one in here, it just means it'll execute forever. And so here I actually show two different ways to do the blink. The first is to set the port B bit, once again, bit five to one, that will output a high out of that pin, pin 17, and that will turn on the LED. Then I'll call my delay function for 1,000 milliseconds or one second. Then I'll set that same bit to zero. And I do that because I'm nodding it here and then I and it here. So this will be a zero, and anything you and with a zero, whether it's already a zero or one, will turn to a zero. So that will set the LED off, and then I'll delay again. The way I'm actually going to do it here is actually there's another set of registers that if you set one of those bits to a 1, it'll automatically toggle whatever it is. Whatever its current value is, it'll toggle it. So I'm using, once again, bit 5. I'm going to set in this register, I'm going to set bit 5 to 1, and that will toggle whatever the output value of you know PB5 or pin 17 is. And then I just need to delay. So that's actually an easier way to do it, just kind of showing two different ways. So now that we have our code, we want to upload it to our board. I can upload it regular, start without debugging, or I can do it start with debugging. And I'll, I'll do that. I actually have a video that goes over sort of the, some of the debugging functions with the Arduino Zero. So I'm not going to go into what debug is or anything like that, but let's do it with debugging. So notice I get an error. Well, not really an error, a warning. So it doesn't know what to look for to program. So I need to set that up. So it basically jumps to here and I have these different, uh, I'll say things to change. So it wants to know what is my debugging programming tool. So I go here and you know it detects what's connected. So I can either do a simulator or there is the EG, EDBG chip that it detects that's connected to it. So that's what I select. The interface, you can do ISP, but then you can't do, do debugging through ISP. So I'm going to do debug wire. So now I have everything set. Let's go back to our code. And now let's hit this. So you can see it writing up there. And right away it stops right here at this point in the code because it's in debugging mode. So I'm just going to press play. And now it's running. And so let me actually show you that the uh, light is blinking. All right, there we are. There is the board and the LED on it is blinking. And you can basically see the reason I chose this pin is because this is the, the pin 
the actual pin is right here, but it's tied to this LED. Just like pin 13 on the uh, digital pin 13 on the Arduino board is tied to an LED, they have this one tied to an LED. So that's that's what I'm blinking. So there's a quick sort of getting started with the Atmega 168PB. I will note that I looked into adding the Arduino bootloader onto this. So I said, well, can I add the Arduino bootloader and I can use the Arduino IDE to program this? So what I found out is since none of the Arduino boards have the PB chip on it, there's it's not really supported. No one's really wrote the bootloader version for this chip yet. Now, I did read on some forums that some people went into you know the board text file on the Arduino IDE and they changed it so you don't get an error because basically what happens in the Arduino IDE is you get an error saying that you know this chip is not supported or this board is not supported or device is not supported so you can actually there's ways it looks like to uh, fool it to think it's just an older 168 but the PB model has more pins than the older version so you can't use those pins even if you did get this you know old 168 bootloader on it but once again, this is all at the time of this video. Maybe by the time you watch this, they'll actually be an Arduino bootloader, which would be nice because you already have a programmer on here so you could use this in the Arduino environment. Okay, that's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching.